Two-time WNBA champion Ruth Riley has transitioned from playing the game of basketball to broadcasting it. Tonight, we get a behind-the-scenes look at her game day preparation. I'm here at Doe Campbell Stadium and it's rivalry week. The Florida State Seminoles are looking to continue their winning streak against the Florida Gators. Tonight, Miami Heat champion Shane Battier hosted his annual karaoke competition, Battioke. You know the Miami Heat players are talented when it comes to the court with the ball in their hand, but just how well do they perform when it's time to hit the stage holding a mic? The Seminoles aren't only turning up for jam with him. With all the excitement, they're ready to jam for the upcoming season. It's Women's History Month, and as March comes to an end, the fourth annual Glitz and Girl Power Awards ceremony has once again gathered powerful women to be recognized and celebrated, honoring their ability to trailblaze and inspire other women to walk in their light. It's holiday season, and Santa Claus isn't the only one delivering gifts. Heat guard Rodney McGruder has a few special presents of his own. The Tar Heels have not played here in Tallahassee since 20 11, in which they won the series 2-1. to one. In the first season, the NCAA recognized beach volleyball as a championship sport. Florida State has its eyes on the prize once again. With both Jones brothers being Seminoles and going on to the NFL, it still wasn't the end of the Jones legacy. In 2014, a new member of the Jones family had arrived on Florida State's campus. After wrapping up a successful career as a professional athlete, Wyckoff didn't quite give up on the game she loved. The former Ford began a career as a high school basketball coach. However, a phone call from a familiar voice lured her back to a place she once called home. JB, what a performance tonight. Tonight was highly anticipated. What was your mindset coming into this game? FSU football has always prided itself on family, talent, and maintaining a world-class legacy. Shining on the field in the 80s, 90s, and today, Seminoles Frederick Jones, Marvin Jones, and Fred Jones know all about upholding the Garnet and Gold legacy. I had a great experience playing uh, football here at FSU. Uh, never been away from home, but uh, the fans, the, the team, the players, everybody, the coaches, everything made it a very nice, pleasant experience. Frederick Jones spearheaded the family legacy, making his debut as a Knoll in the 1983 season at linebacker. I love linebacker. Linebacker is that kind of position that you're basically like the quarterback on defense. I enjoy the intensity, I enjoy hitting. After four seasons at Florida State, Jones went on to the Kansas City Chiefs. Although on a bigger stage, it was only the beginning of the Jones reign. I was telling Florida State, I had a brother that's gonna be even better than I was. They didn't believe me at first. Marvin Jones arrived on Florida State's campus in 1990. Given the nickname Shade Tree, Jones dominated at linebacker, all while wearing number 55, just like his big brother. Gino Toretto will drop the throw, and he will get the pass away, dumps it off, and a hit made! Boy, oh, was he pounded! Was that Shade Tree Marvin Jones that made the hit? So, boy, that was a bone-rattling tackle. Football is something that we share, me and my brother Marvin. It brought responsibility into our lives, and it also helped bring us closer. Marvin went on to have a successful professional career as a Jet, playing in the NFL for 10 seasons. It was very rewarding because I always believe that, you know, I want my brother, even my son, I want them to always go further than I went. With both Jones brothers being Seminoles and going on to the NFL, it still wasn't the end of the Jones legacy. In 2014, a new member of the Jones family had arrived on Florida State's campus. I know as a kid, I always wanted to come here. And when they offered me, you know, I had to play cool, you know, but on the inside, I was just excited. I was just so happy. When he got the offer to get a scholarship, brought tears in my eyes because I, I started thinking about my years and my brother's years and what Florida State meant to me, and I was proud. I was real proud. Although playing defensive tackle, Fred also finds meaning in the number 55 and wears the jersey proudly. I feel great when I put on the jersey. 55 on the back it says Joe. And to this day, my dad and my uncle are still, every time they see it, every time they see me, they're almost about to cry. Cause they know what they put in to this program. They know I'm doing it the same thing too. I want him to always be his own man, set his, set his own goals and accomplish his own things. But when he wanted to say to dad, I want to be like you, I want to be similar to you. That meant a lot, and it made me feel proud as a father. He's just a great son that just happened to be a football player. Every time I turn around, he always say, son, I'll still always love you if you didn't play football. You know, he was, he was never a dad to 
pushed me into football saying, you're going to play. It was something I always wanted to do. If I didn't love football, I would not be going out there practicing every day to get better. Football just gives me a better opportunity in life. Fred continues to shape the family legacy, representing number 55 to the best of his ability. And with the Jones family blood running through his veins, his talent and work ethic is sure to add another successful chapter to the Jones dynasty. I'm Brandi Troop for Seminole Sports Magazine.